Welcome to the Local Marketing Source Weekly Update, brought to you by LocalMarketingSource.com. This week's Local Marketing Update is brought to you by Scott Gallagher. Scott is the co-founder of Local Marketing Source and has become the recognized expert in providing online marketing services to local businesses. Follow Scott on Twitter at ScottGallagher5 and on Facebook.com slash Scott P. Gallagher. Scott Gallagher here with Local Marketing Source, and today we've got our Local Marketing Industry Update, and I've got a busy day today. We've got quite a few things that have happened in this last week. Uh, the local internet marketing landscape is always changing, and that seems to be the notion, but let's face it, the local internet marketing industry is just getting closer and closer to what marketing is really all about, and uh, yet Google is, is continuing to shake things up, you know, since they entered the local market space that six years ago, 2009. They just don't. They just don't get their shit together, and it's it's pretty wild. Um, it's frustrating for business owners and and marketers, but you know we're here to decipher some of that and go through some of that to determine essentially what uh, what Google's up to with with Google Plus and and whatnot. But today we are going to uh, talk about some uh, some expansions on a Google app and their indexing and their indexing of live stream content. So I'm going to talk about how that might be relevant for a local business. Uh, an update with Bing. Bing's got some uh, redesigns on their homepage, uh, but more so I want to get into discussions about answers and direct answers and what that means for local businesses and marketers. Content marketing is all the big rage uh, discussion about content marketing. God, I hate that term, but it's really just aspects of marketing but there's content marketing software out there and Google has just developed a partnership with some content marketing software I find that very interesting but I'm going to tell you about that and how you know creating different blog content can get into a new what's called a new local business carousel um, the, the new Google Plus is something we're going to be talking about and Oh God, Google Plus and their social network, but how Google Plus is really all about collections and absolutely not about business. It's it's like Google has put up signs in in there and said business is not wanted. <laughs> and finally, we're going to talk about Facebook and reviews and how Facebook is playing into this local world and. God, they've been at stuff for a year and a half, and just like every other one of the biz major corporations out there trying to get into the local eco space, Google is really, sorry, my bad, Facebook is really dropping the ball. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll have some discussions about that. So I think that's going to take up quite a bit of our time. I don't think we're going to have any other time to get into uh, some overview or, or tips this week, uh, but I will definitely, and I always have time, or questions and uh, just some clarity on questions that you know these these live calls are for LMS members active LMS members that are live and we encourage you to ask your questions at the end and these could be any questions you want uh, heck you could ask me about your relationship and you probably don't want to ask me about that um, but nonetheless, you could ask me whatever you want, and I will have an answer for any question that you give me. I can answer any question you give me. <laughs> but more so, it doesn't matter. Typically, what members will do is write down some of their challenges throughout the week and you know, get on the calls and ask questions about your business or if it's about your processes or sales challenges or clients or you know, what strategies you may be using that work. Speak up. All right. We don't. Uh, we record those for members, and those are available to only members. Uh, but the the portion of the uh, overview uh, is recorded and made public. I just want to remind you of that as well. So let's get into the update. Well, Google is expanding their app indexing to find stream app only content. In other words, Google is making more of an effort to find streamed content. Now next Tuesday, I'll be hosting my first live video stream on YouTube. Um, 
Well, we'll see. You know what was interesting? You know, my son will record himself playing video games, and he'll get 20, 30 views after he posts it. And he started streaming a a uh, a video game, and within 20 minutes of him playing, he had over 400 live viewers. Think about that. Do you know how hard I have to work to get 400 viewers to attend a webinar stream? <laughs> and he jumps on YouTube and all of a sudden, boom. And then he says, hey, subscribe to my channel. I do this frequently and you'll get notified for it. Boom. He's got 40 new opt-ins. Just like that. <laughs> now, it's a lot harder in the business world. But it's the same vision. What's happening right now is Google, YouTube, they are funneling a lot of traffic to live streams. This is the big, the next big thing. I hate to say the next big thing. <coughs> but before you know it, there's going to be apps and streams and live streams all throughout your Facebook feed. People are going to be walking around with freaking little cameras on their heads. There may be, uh, you know, clothing that's going to have, here's a Kickstarter idea, a piece of clothing that you put on and it's got a camera built into the back of your collar. So when you're walking around, you can live stream that. I mean, it's more content. It's, I'm giving you my, my thoughts. You watch. Uh, live stream is, is going to be a big thing for a lot of different areas. It's very clear or it appears that Facebook or sorry, YouTube is pushing uh, a lot of a lot of the video gaming live stream right now. That's really is where it's going to start. Uh, but you know those those days are are, are going to be numbered where it becomes mainstream fairly quickly. Now again, in my case, I'm able to do a live stream next week. Uh, I'm going to have a green screen background and have different video overlays and you know subscription call to actions and just share my desktop and, and have a lot of fun with it. Uh, you know, have different camera angles. We're gonna run a full show right out of right out of my agency. But local businesses can can do that. Um, you know, perhaps a perhaps it's a local oh I'm looking outside of my office right now and I see a kids school, a private school. You know, zero to zero one one year old to, to twelve years old and um you know, maybe they want to set up live streams in the classroom. Maybe, maybe they're going to be subscription-based. Um, maybe lobbies. Maybe there may be, uh, you know, some sort of gaming center. What about gyms? But more so, when we talk about live and content on a, on a live stream aspect, uh, when we start to talk about this new content marketing relationship with Scribble Live is where this idea of Google's expansion and indexing live stream content is really going to affect the, the local business landscape. Now, let me jump to that. That wasn't the next discussion in my notes, but um, what this is is a company called Scribble Live. Actually, I believe they're out of Toronto. And what's going to happen is like for, for search queries that return a result, Uh, it is going to be both recognized as a live blog by Google that meets certain criteria. And Google will display a carousel style search result that shows a number of recent posts from that event. So a local business may, may for example, uh, volunteer into some sort of uh, local event or provide some sort of donation and then create a blog post about that and tag it and link it up to that event. Perhaps it may be through a hashtag. And what Google is going to do is showcase that as live content, live stream content that has local intent specific to that event. So in other words, you see what's happening here is as businesses participate in the community, they're going to be recognized and their content is going to show during the time frame of that particular event. It's just more motivation for businesses to get more involved with the community. 
and then for you as a marketer to share that, to tell the world to share that information, and that's on your blog to share that information. It's marketing, right? You see content marketing, they call themselves content marketing software. Holy crap. That's a, what is that, a pun or an idiom? Content marketing, they're, marketing is about creating content, but there's more to it than just that. You see content marketing misses it half the equation. You can't just create good stuff for an audience that you think is going to be good for that audience. You also have to distribute it. So there's there's got to be distribution. But what you see what Google has done is Google partnering with Scribble is is filling the other side of that equation for, for content marketing. There is a distribution of it. So anytime you read into, oh, content marketing uh, on, in the SEO world or, or whatnot or these new tools, and you've got to completely take a step back and understand that distribution works hand in hand with the creation of the content. Now, Bing has got a fresh new redesign. They've got a new homepage now, uh, and they've redesigned something called Direct Answers. And I wanted to raise this as a point. I know Bing doesn't have a lot of market share, but you see Bing follows what Google is trying to do and what others have had success at. And Google has, has not come out explicitly to say that, you know, we've got answers, but what they do has is they have their knowledge graph uh, and their knowledge base, and ultimately they're trying to answer questions. And I wanted to raise this point because, you know, us as human beings, we've had to retrain our brain to use a search engine, to use this tool. It's not intuitive. It's, you know, we, we go use a search engine to get information. Uh, in other words, we're trying to answer a question that we've developed inside our, our noggin. And we take that question that we have or that problem that we want to solve, and we go through a process internally in our heads to translate that into a keyword string. We, we can't come out specifically and ask the question as we would verbally if we were asking a professor or somebody of authority. So that process of, of transforming our thought into a keyword string is a step along the way that distanced the search engine, the user, from the search engine delivering the goal that they're trying to deliver. Um, if that searcher could ask that question specifically, then the search and en search engine can fully understand it. Th th then, then you're 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 not you don't have that step in place because a lot of people go through that process differently. How do you take a question and translate that into a string of keywords? People screw it up. I'm a much better user of Google than most people I know, and I you don't think of that as a skill. But it is a skill. I've got different, perm, you know, I use the, you know, different permeators, the negatives, the uh, quotations. You know, I, I know how to get around Google fairly well that I, I can find the answers to what I'm looking for typically a lot quicker than most people. Excuse me for a moment. <coughs> I'm still getting over this cold. Now it's not it's not anything to to brag about or you know, go home screaming and crying to my mom to to to, to, to tell her all about my uh, Google searching capabilities. But that's the truth of it: is that different people have different different ability to search, and the search engines don't want that. You know, they just want to be able to deliver the best user experience for everybody. And they're getting closer and closer and closer uh, every each and every time. Now with Bing. Uh, improving their answers is just that. You see, Apple has done a very good job with Siri, but they're not a search engine. Apple doesn't have a search engine. Apple goes out and searches with search engines and other pages to get the answer. Siri does a good job, but Siri's done a good job as understanding human communication, and, and that gap is closing. Um, very likely, 
you're seeing that gap close because of what Microsoft has done in their recent mobile applications to try to compete against uh, solutions like Siri. Now, the new Google Plus, uh, I, I just wanted to raise some discussion about it, that it's, you know, it's all about collections and it's not about business. You know, Google Plus has released a new responsive mobile first design. Um, it's very clear that this product is focused on collections and communities and content. So collections being, you know, posts of what else is that's out there, different communities and groups. Heck, that's a sick, uh, you know, that's a, a six human elements of emotion and content. While we were discussing different aspects of content and how Google has expanded its app to find and stream app-only content. So this new Google Plus um, has got its mobile-first design. It's used and it's it's in it's intended to engage with mobile users. And what's frustrating for businesses is that there's the absence of simple business information, owner information, description, photos, videos, or reviews. It's all gone. It's focusing on different content and different communities and collection that Google has, they've hung out with a big, bold sign on their Google Plus network. I don't know what their intentions are and what the objections, objectives are here. Google is like, they, they wake up on a different side of the bed every week. And it was six months ago that we were reporting, you know, with this new Google My Business, which is different than Google Plus. They're separating the distances of them. But you see, Google Plus is now not not necessarily a social network, but more so a destination of real-time information. And Google seems to feel right now that those individuals that are searching on mobile devices want to engage more with real-time content. So that leads me to believe that businesses that are creating blog posts that are truly engaging with their audience and engaging with the community are going to get greater exposure on mobile-based searches for their products and services. Yet more of a confirmation and emphasis that the content we create should clearly resonate with an audience and truly bring them value. We're not writing for the sake of writing. Well, that's my take on all this. So we'll see how that pans out and turns out over the over the coming weeks and months. And the last thing, uh, is it? No, it's not even the last update. Man, lots of updates this week. It's a busy one. I'm trying to fly through this. I try to maintain updates to 20 minutes. Um, but obviously, we're longer than that today. And... In the last year and a half, Facebook, God, these kids are skateboarding outside my office again. Sorry. Reminds me of me when I was 18 years old, and now I'm the one that gets frustrated. <laughs> Facebook, uh, you know, for the last year and a half, Facebook has been slowly pushing into the local space. Uh, one of those efforts has begun entirely with the review space. And they've managed to become one of the leading general review sites. Not for any other reason other than their user base and their user familiarity with Facebook. They run the periodic promotion for that. Um, and that's great. It's all good stuff. But the bad news is <laughs> it's, they haven't put any filters in place. It's like It's like the Wild West. Of, of internet or how how reviews were back in in 2008 and 2009 um, there's just no author authenticity to to the reviews and you know that sets businesses up for for sabotage and pissed off employees and bad relationships and 
customers that are just whiners and complainers and it creates a, a piss poor ecosystem, a local, very poor eco, local ecosystem for, for the user experience. I mean, I don't know how much this is going to damage their efforts because right now they're looking for content. They're not looking for quality. Um, and they've got the user base to, to truly shift and demand perception if they want to. So maybe it's a good business strategy internally, but it's not the end all be all. And these are some things that Facebook is eventually going to have to to work on is, you know, McDonald's is a company that's a very good marketing company. They're, they're, they're a company that could sell a really shitty product and do really good at it. You know, they've, they've become masters at that and they've done very, very good at that. Whereas um, a company like Five Guys is a national hamburger chain and it's the fastest hamburger, fastest growing hamburger chain in America. You know, they've got several, they've got over 2,000 locations now compared to McDonald's around 8,000. I don't know if those numbers are right, but um, they're adding way more locations every day than, than McDonald's. But the point is, is they both sell hamburgers. One's a great marketing company with a shitty product. The other's got a fantastic product with piss poor marketing. Now, where their marketing is very good is they leverage media. So they leverage press and, and in turn they get a lot of free coverage. But they've built their business off of word of mouth. And and so, you know, you've got just it's just positioning. And right now, Facebook is like the McDonald's. They're they're just they've just got the marketing clout behind them, but they don't have any substance. And this is just the last one that I wanted to throw in here is that Google just created another partnership with an organization called Home Advisor. And what this is is allowing is for services, home home services, for example, or home contractors, that Google may become the interface to book these contractors. Yet in turn, giving more reason for users to evade a business website, to get away from it. Um, and that Google wants to be the end-all be-all in terms of you know displaying information and go-to. And, and so integration of, of, of the profiles, uh, price estimates, uh, book now, and call to actions within Google My Business are just becoming more and more important. So for LMS members, you know, ensure that you're following the best practices when completing profiles. Fill that information out as much as possible and, and get the right pictures in there, and, you know, videos, and, you know, communication. So, all right, so that, that's going to come to the end of this week's update. I'm going to take 30 seconds right now, and I will be right back and answer any questions that you guys might have. And I can answer, I have an answer for any question. Well, thanks for watching the local marketing industry update. We've got these things coming out every single week. So if you liked with what you heard, just click the button right above me right here to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to get a little bit more, right over here, go check out localmarketingsource.com. We've got free reports that you can grab. You can even register for our free marketing course to get in and see the portal. Or just go ahead and follow us on some of the social channels. We'll be around. Until next time.